Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the contact service that's built into macOS Server. Now one of the benefits of having a server is the ability to host many of the elements that you would normally host with services like iCloud or with Google. Instead you can host those things on your server which makes them private and allows you to be the only one that has access to those services. And so if you're in a situation or in an occupation where your contacts need to be private, uh, you don't want those getting out anywhere, maybe you work in uh, some kind of uh, role with HIPAA or one of those other type of situations. Uh, this gives you the opportunity to be able to keep those things private and host them only on your own server and then connect to those uh, those pieces of information on your other devices. And so that's one of the benefits of macOS Server. So this is the contact service which allows you to set up your own contact server so that any contacts that you have you can host them on your server and then you can connect to those on all of your devices. So let's go ahead and take a look at the service. The service itself is pretty simple. You can see it's offline right now. Uh, we have the same permissions situation here. I can edit the permissions as to who has access to it. I can say all users are only some and I can choose the networks that have access to it. Only on private networks or some networks or all networks. And again this is, this is basically your firewall setup. Uh, to make sure that it's protected or not to the degree that you want it protected. I'm just going to say cancel because I'm going to leave it the way it is. Now, right here you see we've got push notifications, and you can see that it is disabled. And so what we're going to want to do is enable push notifications. So if I just uh, click on enable, uh, you can see that they're disabled. You want to uh, allow push notifications to sync your contacts over the Internet. So what this is going to do is push any changes that you make on your devices or uh, on any of your devices or on the server itself to be pushed to your different devices. So we're going to go ahead and enable push notifications. And so it's going to go uh, ahead and start to set that up for us. Okay, and now that that's done, you can see that it says enabled. And I could come here and edit the notification settings whenever I want. You can see it shows the expi expiration date. This is where I would new renew uh, the push notification. I can also change the Apple ID that I'm using if I want to. And I can also click this link right here to manage certificates. And when I do that, it's going to take me to this website. Let me just pull this up here. It's going to take me to the push notification certificate portal. And let me just show you what that looks like. If I just sign in, you can see that it asked me to verify my identity because I have two-factor authentication set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and say continue. And it's going to ask for a verification code, so let me just get that and put that in here. And I'll say continue. And so this is where it shows the certificates that I have active, and it shows the certificates I have active for the various services that I have as well. So I can revoke these at any time if I wanted to do that right here from this portal. But I wanted to show you that you could manage your certificates using uh, that particular link. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this, and we'll come back in here. And we're going to go ahead and say Done. Now another place you could enable push notifications if you wanted to, if we just come up to Server up here, and if we go to Settings, uh, right here you can actually enable Apple push notifications from right here as well. So I just want to show you there are a couple of places you can do that. So the other thing we can do is allow searching for uh, the directory in our contacts application. What that means, if I check this box right here, that means that I'm allowing search for my user accounts that I have in my open directory. So that I'll have that on inside the contacts application. So if you want to have people be able to search the directory and the users that are in there, you're going to want to go ahead and check that box. If not, then you can just leave that unchecked if you don't want people to have access to searching for these accounts that are in here. So it does give you a, a kind of a directory uh, setup uh, that would allow you to do that kind of search. So now that I've got all of these things set up, I'm going to go ahead and just throw the switch here to turn the service on. You can see that it's starting, and we'll go ahead and wait for it to go live here. And once it's live, uh, it will be ready to go, and we'll see a little green dot over here, which you can see that the green dot is on. It's still starting to configure the service, and once that's done, and you can see it's available there on my local network. So now that we've got the service set up and ready to go, let me show you what it looks like to configure it on one of your devices. Okay, so here I am on a screen share with my laptop. And so we're going to go into System Preferences to set this up, and we're going to go to the Internet Accounts area. So if I just click on that, 
we're going to click the plus to add an account. And if I scroll down right through all of these things, I've got this Mac OS server account. And that's what I want to set up. Now, I could set up a card dev account if I wanted to do that. I could set it up that way and just set up the contacts. But it's a lot easier just to set it up through this Mac OS server account. So let me show you how to do that. And this will be in effect for all of our other services as well. So I'm just going to click on this, and you'll see that it locates our server there. We're going to go ahead and highlight our server. And you could do an other server if you wanted to if your server didn't show up. Since I'm on my local network, it's showing up right away. If you're not on your local network, you'd have to uh, you know, click on Other. And then what would happen is, is you go through a process of putting in your host name and then your username and password. I don't have that case because my server's here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and say Next. And then I need to put in my username and password. So let me go ahead and put that in. And once I have that there, I would just click on Sign In. And you notice it signs into my server and it picks up the other services that I have set up. And so if you remember in our previous screencast, we had set up VPN in the past. So that's why that's available. And I can just check the services that I want to have set up. Now, since I set up VPN manually before, I'm going to go ahead and just uncheck that for now, and I'm just going to install contacts. If you had your other services running like calendar or messages and that sort of thing, all of these would be available here as well to check. So I'm just going to check that one, and I'm just going to say done. And so now it's going to set up the server account. And you can see it's got the server account here with all of my services. And if I ever want to add them, all I have to do is check the box there, and it will add that service to the account. So it works out really well uh, in terms of setting it up all in one shot. So let's go ahead and just close this down. And what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and pull up contacts and show you what that looks like. OK, so here I am in the contacts application. And as you can see, I've got all my contacts, contacts on my Mac. And here I've got Mac OS server. So it's showing up. And this would be all my Mac OS server contacts. Now down here, you see I've got my directories. I've got all directories, directory services, and Mac OS server. Now, you'll notice that no contacts show up there, but I do have uh, individuals in my directory. Now, I can search all the directories, but what I've got to do to have contacts come up is search them. So you know we have John Doe in there, so let's go ahead and search for John. I'm just going to start typing. And you'll notice there's John Doe. So John Doe does show up right here. He's a, a directory um, contact that I've got on my server. This is one of my directory accounts. So I can search for those directory services. Uh, so what's going to happen is it's not going to just show everybody in the directory in here. That is someone that you'll have to search for. So you'll have to know who you're looking for for those to show up. But if I come in here, I can add contacts all I want, and those contacts then would be stored on the server. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that by doing it this way, I've signed in with my user account. So what that means is that any contacts I add in here that will be on the server will only be viewable by me because they'll be associated with my account. So if you wanted to have an account that was viewable for everyone, what you would need to do is go into the server. And let me just show that to you. I'm just going to put this down for a minute. We're going to come back in here. If you go into the server into users, you would come in here and just add an account. So just put the plus here. You add a local network directory account. And what I usually tell people to do is to name it something like, you know, uh, contacts all or, you know, joint contacts or something like that. Uh, not contents, contacts all. And uh, then you've got your short name there, and you could put in your password and all of that. And then what would happen is, and you want to make sure this is just services only because you don't want any kind of information in there. You don't want them to administer the server, but you would put this in here. And then what you would do with your users is have them log in, right, add this contact uh, account like we did with system preferences, only instead of putting in their username and password, they would be putting in this, uh, this contacts all with the password from here. And then anybody who adds that same account would just share the contacts across all of their devices. OK, so that's a way to have a common contacts repository that everybody is pulling for. They just have to make sure they're using this particular account for those contacts. And what you would do, if I can just show you, let me pull up that screen share again. If we were to come in here like we did before in System Preferences and go to the Internet Accounts again, and come down here, we would we would say add another account, and then we would just add a card dev account. And right here is where you would you could put in the email address or the server address. And if you want to say advanced, you put in username and password, the server address, and then you'd be all set. And this would be the contacts all with the password, with your server address right here, and then you would add that, and that would show up over here on the side as another Mac OS server account. That would then be a joint one that everybody could share. 
So that gives you an idea of how uh, that would work. Let me go ahead and just uh, put this uh, down here. And we're going to go ahead and cancel this and come back to contacts. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use the contact service on macOS server. Again, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, setup there. There's not a lot to it, but it does allow you to host your own contacts that are secure just between you and your server and any devices you want to have use it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.